On the outskirts of the ancient Incan capital of Cusco, in Peru, on an artificially leveled mountaintop, sits what many believe to be the most impressive piece of ancient architecture in South America, the remarkable megalithic site of Saxe Waman. Giant stones, the heaviest said to weigh 200 tons or more, make up walls three terraces deep in a zigzag pattern approximately 1,500 feet long, 54 feet deep and 9 meters tall. A stunning feat of construction with no viable explanation of how it was achieved. The first occupation on the hilltop has been dated to 900 AD, to the time when the Kilke held sway over the area. They are also said to be the original founders of Cusco, which would later become the Incan capital. According to their own origin story, the Inca migrated to the area, conquered the local tribes, and said it was they who founded Cusco around 1100 AD. But the truth is, we don't actually know who built the giant walls we see today, why they built them, what it was used for, or how it was built. Welcome to Our Curious Past, where we dive into the oddities of the ancients. We explore the myths and origins given to us by our ancestors, pointing to a past now long forgotten. We investigate the ruins and structures which don't fit within the current narrative of history, searching the unexplainable and inconceivable feats achieved long ago, often ascribed to those who give no claim to their creation. Is Saxo Waman just an Incan fortress, or is it something different entirely? Could this be the beacon to the past some refuse to acknowledge? When the Spanish arrived at Cusco in the mid-1500s, Pedro Pizarro described what he found. On a hilltop, the Inca have a very strong fort surrounded with masonry walls of stones and having two very high round towers. In the lower part of this wall, there were stones so large and thick that it seemed impossible that human hands could have set them in place. They were so close together and so well fitted that the point of a pin could not have been inserted in one of the joints. Academia mostly credits the supposed fortress to Pachacuti, who reigned between 1338 AD and 1471 AD, and that it was added to by his successors. It is a perfect place to build a fortress, on a mountain top, a great vantage point for a military complex, and the Spanish were told that Pachacuti ordered 20,000 men to come from the provinces. He had 4,000 men quarry and cut stone, with 6,000 hauling them with great cables of leather and hemp. The remaining 10,000 dug and laid the foundations, while others cut poles and beams for the timbers for the complex. Most believe that Pachacuti and other Incan kings implemented construction projects at Saxe Waman, including the citadel which now lies in ruin atop the hill. But the foundation stones are so massive and so heavy, fitted with a precision which baffles modern engineers, that many struggle to believe he, the Kilke, or any other Incan king are responsible for their placement. In fact, some have reported that the Inca themselves say the site was constructed by an earlier unnamed race of people who were led by a mighty god who descended from the sky. A strange proclamation to make, but one which is not out of place. Origin stories just like this one exist around the world at other ancient sites, telling us of how giant, unfathomable structures like this one were constructed in our deep past. Today, we can see the difference between the construction works which took place at the site the lower part of the wall, the part the Spanish specifically mention as seemingly impossible for human hands to have set in place, is of a sophistication unmatched when compared to the structures which exist and existed atop them. The staircases linking the levels are clearly not original, adding later on with much smaller blocks and using mortar, something not found in the most impressive feats of construction undertaken by the megalithic builders. Repair work is also visible, with additions on the walls added using the same much smaller blocks. In Cusco itself, you can see the difference in construction technique. After the conquest of the Inca, the Spanish ravaged the fortress, taking stone blocks, or at least the ones they could move, for their own construction projects within the city. 
earlier work in the city, neatly fitted basalt blocks, are clearly more sophisticated than the later Inca work created out of limestone, and the sloppy Spanish work where mortar is used. Both the Inca and the Spanish fitted their own work into these walls, clearly showing they could not match the level of technique. The Corricantia, another anomaly within this place, is made of granite blocks three feet thick with no gap from front to back. The lintels within the building are astonishingly level to a precision which can only be matched with today's building techniques. The stones are incredibly well fitted together with no mortar so that you cannot fit anything in between them. I should note here that the gap seen in some of the vertical joinery in these blocks is due to an earthquake having taken place at some point in the past, and they would have appeared exactly the same as the horizontal joinery which still shows the precision in these walls. Researchers from many different scientific disciplines are questioning whether the Corricantia and the walls at Saxe Waman could have been built by the Inca or other pre-Incan peoples, with the consensus beginning to lean towards the possibility of some other civilised culture being responsible at a much earlier date than previously accepted. Unfortunately, we may never know what Saxe Waman or Cusco looked like when the Spanish first set eyes upon the place. It should also be noted that the Spanish were unable to move the massive stones at Saxe Waman, perhaps also unable to destroy them, so instead of leaving them to be occupied by rebels, they buried them under the earth from the surrounding area. The unbelievable size and weight of the foundation blocks are just too massive to have been moved and placed so precisely by the Inca or the Kilke before them. Some weigh 200 tons or more, coming from a quarry three miles away. Not an insurmountable distance, but a feat of impressiveness which needs to be questioned. The truth of the matter, archaeologists who have studied the site and other researchers have no idea how they would have achieved this, especially when there is simply no evidence to justify it. A puzzling fact about these stones is that no marks for cutting or working them have been found at the proposed quarry site itself. If the Inca, with their bronze tools, or any other culture quarried the stone from this site, the blunt puncture marks of hammer and chisel would have been found. However, this is not the only problem. The blocks, at both Saxe Waman and Cusco, are made from basalt, granite and metamorphosed limestone, rock far too hard for bronze tools to work. I have mentioned the hardness scale before in other videos, and the same thing is occurring here. The rock mentioned is higher on this scale than bronze, meaning they wouldn't have been able to work the stone, and using the same type of stone as tools to carve the rock would have been extremely difficult and it would have taken an unimaginable time to complete. We see this throughout archaeology around the world, where cultures and civilizations are being accredited with construction projects without having the means to have actually completed them. Although, this might not be the most puzzling thing about the construction of Saxe Waman. The blocks themselves are so tightly fitted together, using no mortar, that a piece of paper cannot be placed between any part of the wall which has not been damaged by earthquakes. They are of a polygonal design, rounded in places, mostly at the corners, and they are not simple or repetitive shapes as seen in most building projects of the Inca, or by those before or after them. The walls appear to have been constructed so that each block has been uniquely shaped to fit in its particular place. It is so complex and so unknown in construction technique that it is more likely to have not been the work of those who have been gifted its creation than it is to have been. There is another anomalous area very close to the huge walls of Saxe Waman, an outcrop of massive stones which have odd carved features within them, called Shinkana, meaning tunnel and it has been suggested tunnels are present in the area, but more on that later. The surfaces of these blocks are highly eroded, but you can still see the precision of the carving which has been cut into them, including what appear to be staircases, one of which is upside down. What is believed to be the front of the Chicana appears to have been moulded in some way, with strange indentations, but no one knows for what purpose. Some have suggested these are quarries, some building projects, but not Saxe Waman itself, 
but this is highly disputed. The surfaces are just too smooth to have been worked for quarrying. Is it possible these blocks are showing us evidence of a huge cataclysm occurring long ago in our deep past? It has been suggested these blocks are not in their original positions, likely thrown from where they once stood, and some being broken apart, or as mentioned, upside down. Maybe we'll never know, but we should continue to investigate this possibility. One of the main accepted theories for how the Inca created the polygonal shaped stones is called scribing, essentially template making. It is suggested the Inca quarried the stone, moved them up to the site, then measured the gap between the stones already in place by using a wooden template, then through chiseling and polishing, moulded the stone to fit precisely in place. But this theory is another highly disputed one. We have already mentioned the problems at the quarrying site, but the amount of time it would have taken to have achieved the result through chiseling and polishing makes it highly implausible. This is supposedly the best theory for how the construction of these massive walls was achieved. It shows how very little we actually know about this place. It could be that the Inca used the scribing technique on their smaller stone worked projects, but it doesn't really fit with what we see on the ground at both Sacsayhuaman and in Cusco. Another problem we have with this theory is the stones themselves are vitrified. Vitrification is the process of transforming a substance into glass, which happens when you heat a material to melting temperature, then rapidly cool it, turning it back into a solid. Could this really have been achieved by the Inca and other ancient societies around the world which show evidence of vitrification? Some believe it's highly unlikely and point to the possibility of a much more sophisticated, perhaps much older civilization for its creation, or maybe something entirely different. When it comes to Sacsayhuaman specifically, there are some problems with the Inca having vitrified the stones, namely the fact that if the stones were worked, even with cutting and polishing, they still had to move these massive stones, potentially at superheated temperatures, then mould them into place. If the stones were carved after vitrification, then we would see evidence of tool marks where the glass-like surface would have been chipped away. Maybe we need to start thinking differently about this place. There is a lot of mystery on the ground at Sacsayhuaman, but there is also mystery underneath. Known as Chincanas, these tunnels are said to be a labyrinth underneath the citadel, and legends have persisted over the years about unimaginable treasures being hidden within them. For this reason, over the centuries, people have ventured down into the darkness, searching for the proposed treasure, often never to return. Due to these disappearances, most of the tunnels were blocked off in the 1920s, the exception of one, Chincana Cherka, which connects two known areas on the citadel. It would be fascinating to find out where the closed tunnels lead. Other theories about these tunnels have them linking Sacsayhuaman to other ancient sites, including Cusco itself, and as far as Tiwanaku or Pumapunku, where underground voids have been found, but no evidence linking the two has, as of yet, come to light. Until they reopen these tunnels and do a full-scale mapping of them, safely and conducted by experts, we'll never know where they go or what their purpose may have been, let alone who built them and why. The question of who built the giant zigzag walls that we have already alluded to is not a simple question to answer. The date of 900 BC for initial construction has been justified by surface finds of Kilke pottery. How surface finds could justify this particular date for construction doesn't sit very comfortably for many who have researched this place. If the archaeologists were to dig deeper, maybe all the way to the bottom of the foundation stones, who knows what they might find under the soil. Accrediting the Inca with the building of these walls is also problematic. It is safe to say that they did complete construction works at the site, but there is simply no evidence for the construction of the giant walls by the Inca. The story of Pachacuti is an interesting one, and maybe he did mobilise the population to build great things at Sacsayhuaman, but quarrying these massive stones, transporting them to the site, vitrifying them at enormous temperatures, then moulding them into place with only bronze tools, 
doesn't add up. The truth is, we really don't know how any of this was achieved. We don't even have any information from the Inca themselves about what the site was used for. We rely on a third party, the conquering Spanish, for an explanation. For these reasons, and others mentioned, some suggest a much earlier date for Sacsayhuaman, one which takes it into the mists of time. Suggestions of an ancient cataclysm have been posited by archaeologists and independent researchers. Evidence for this has been cited in the huge stone blocks, the ones which include the upside down staircase, which appear to have been thrown from their original, now unknown positions. They are also broken up, which gives the indication of some form of destruction taking place. Also, the Inca are said to have built on top of the huge anonymous foundation stones. If it is true, the stones were in place before the Inca or the Kilke arrived on the scene, what may have been sat atop them? Could it have been the blocks just mentioned? Or maybe something else entirely? The vitrification of the foundation stones may not have been by design or a construction feature at all. Perhaps they suffered some form of superheated blast, a plasma ejection from the sun has been suggested, and it is possible this kind of cataclysm could cause vitrification to take place. But until we take such theories seriously, will never have all the answers. If a cataclysm of this magnitude did destroy the original structure which made up Sacsayhuaman, it would have most likely happened at the end of the last ice age. We continuously come across this particular theory, the pre-ice age civilization theory, because it pops up again and again at these ancient sites. A specific period has been given for this destruction to have happened, the Younger Dryas period, where more and more evidence is turning up which shows a global catastrophe taking place around this time from core samples taken around the world. If this is the case, Sacsayhuaman would be one of those places which only just survived, leaving just enough of a trace to be reused by the cultures which came after, found what was left of the ruin and reused it for their own purpose. It would be linked to a host of other sites around the world showing evidence of a civilization now lost in our deep past, some of which we've covered, many more we are yet to mention. The truth about this place will most likely never be known. We simply have no idea how the blocks were moved, shaped, placed or why they were vitrified and for what purpose. We have no idea what the site originally looked like or what it was used for. Due to the destruction by the Spanish conquerors, we don't even know what the original Incan supposed fortress really looked like. The Inca left us no records, just a few origin stories pieced together by the conquistadors who arrived at the capital, and even they were in awe over the precise nature of the megalithic construction. To get any kind of real grasp on this amazing place, the authorities, archaeologists and researchers need to conduct more digs, go down further than the surface pottery finds, and maybe they'll find something unexpected, maybe it could change opinions about the history of not only this place, but other anomalous sites around the world. The tunnels running underneath this ancient megalithic site must be explored by professionals using the latest technology and equipment to really find out where they lead, if anywhere at all. We must keep an open mind when investigating places such as Sacsayhuaman and Cusco, which pose more questions than it gives us in answers. Any theory which doesn't fit within the current narrative of history will be thrown on the rubbish dump without serious study, which limits our ability to discover. We must pursue all avenues of inquiry, not limit ourselves. It could lead to the greatest finds of all. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this podcast and want to find out more about our curious past, please consider subscribing to the channel.